What if you could go back in time to 2008 and be one of the first people to create an app on Apple's brand new App Store? Well, right now, you have a very similar opportunity because OpenAI recently announced that they're creating their own App Store and the apps that go into this store are called custom GPTs. However, not every GPT is created equal. Some of them are going to be very simple wrappers around ChatGPT that answer questions about a particular subject that ChatGPT already knows about or create a certain type of image. But you can create a truly valuable and differentiated GPT by using specialized knowledge and actions that integrate it with other apps. Today I'm going to show you how to add expanded knowledge to your custom GPT, how to use actions to call APIs and integrate with other services, and how you can use these two powerful tools to build valuable GPTs that truly stand out. For today's video, I'm working on something that's near and dear to my heart, D&D. I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for about 15 years, and I'll be creating a monster crafter GPT that helps me create unique and exciting monsters that I can challenge my players with. Let me show you the final results so you see what I mean. Create a stat block for a fire-breathing goblin. Here we go. We can see that it is talking to our cloud function now through that create homebrew action that we made. Looks good to me. Look at that. It's perfectly formatted. We can print this out. Let's add an image to it real quick. After a few final edits, this is our final product, all ready to be used in a game of D&D. Before we dive into the development, let's cover some of the concepts that are at play here. So as a quick recap, custom GPTs are versions of chat GPT that specialize in doing something very well. Custom GPTs have instructions, access to expanded knowledge, and access to tools that they can use to accomplish their task. Knowledge comes in the form of documents that are uploaded to the custom GPT that it can then use. They come in a variety of formats like PDFs, CSVs, docs, and plenty of others that are all listed on the OpenAI website. Currently, there is a limit of 10 files that can be uploaded, and a certain file size, which right now I believe is 512 megabytes. But these limits are subject to change, so I wouldn't be surprised to see higher numbers very soon. The data contained within the files that you upload will be the expanded knowledge of the GPT, and the GPT will decide when it is relevant to use parts of that data to carry out tasks for the user. In today's demo, we're going to be using the expanded knowledge feature to show our GPT how we want our data structured so it can use that format when it stores our monster in home brewery. One of the current limitations with knowledge is the fact that there's no way to automatically refresh that data on a regular basis. So you're pretty much limited to the files that you upload, and if you want to change that knowledge over time, you're going to have to upload a new set of files. If you want to build something that's going to require up-to-date data on a regular basis, your two options are either to use actions to retrieve that data when the GPT is running, or to build something using the Assistance API. I have a separate video on that, so if you're curious, make sure to check that out. The next core concept that we're going to discuss is called actions. And actions are kind of what they sound like. There are certain actions that the GPT can take when it thinks it is the right time to do so. In our case, we're going to be creating a new action that the GPT can use to send the data that it creates into home brewery so that we can have a very nicely rendered version of our monster stat block. Under the hood, actions are making API calls. An API is a way for applications to talk to each other in a well-defined way. We can create different endpoints, which are like functions that our GPT can call when the time is right. And the way that the custom GPT knows about those functions is through the open API spec. The open API spec defines how another application might talk to your API. So it lists the different endpoints you have and the different parameters that the other application can submit to you and how you're going to respond back to it. So by submitting this open API spec to your GPT, the GPT is going to know how to talk to your API. So let me give you a pro tip. Don't worry too much about the open API because ChatGPT can actually just generate it for you. APIs also often have authentication to make sure only authorized users can make those API calls. Custom GPTs support a number of different authentication methods and you can configure those within the custom GPT. So to recap on actions real quick, they're really just API calls under the hood. You can tell your custom GPT about your API by submitting the open API spec in the configuration of your GPT. 
And you can use a number of different ways to authenticate your APIs to make sure that this whole process is secure. Let's take a look at the design for this particular build. That way you'll have a better understanding of how the custom GPT works and how it communicates with all the other components. So first of all, we have these two new features, knowledge and actions. Knowledge comes from the files that we're going to upload to our custom GPT, and actions comes from the open API spec that we pass to it. Then it's gonna know which APIs it can call and what functions our custom GPT supports. Along with the chat GPT interface that the user talks to, that comprises the whole GPT. Below here in the blue box are my specific implementation details. So in my case, I wanted to store the monster stat block in home brewery. And unfortunately, it doesn't have an API. So I had to get a little creative and I created a cloud function, which is going to open a web crawler and talk to the web page. So I effectively created an API on top of home brewery. And then I passed that API spec to the custom GPT so that it knows how to talk to it. The details in this blue box can vary depending on your application. The only thing that matters is that there is an entry point, which is your API. The design looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some coffee, start building this out, and I'll see you on the flip side. Whew. Let's take a look at what I've put together. To start things off, I configured my GPT in the most basic way. I talked to the GPT builder and then edited the instructions. Basically, I'm generating a stat block and giving it certain cues to follow to make sure that it does it in the right way. Then I configured the actions. So first of all, I wanted to configure my action that was going to go to home brewery, paste the code that the GPT generates into it, save, and return the URL. That is going to give me everything I need to be able to communicate the URL back to the user. So after a few edits, this is what the final code looks like. You can note here that I'm actually using Firebase functions. This is the way that I'm deploying this code and this is how it's available to the GPT. There are many different ways to deploy code, but I felt that using cloud functions was going to be a really easy way for me to get this thing deployed and not have to worry about managing any infrastructure. If you're curious to learn more about how to deploy code like this, drop a comment down below so that I know whether I should make a video on this subject. So the bottom line is that the code is running as a serverless function up in Google Cloud. And I went over here to the Configure tab to tell my GPT about that function and I needed an open API spec. So what I did is after getting my code working, I just directly asked ChatGPT to generate an open API spec for my API. And it did just that. I think I had like one little error and I asked it to fix it and everything was fine. And then I just pasted it in uh, into here and made sure that I had the correct URL specified. When it's correctly configured, you will see these available actions down here and these will represent the different things that the GPT can do. After configuring the actions, I configured my knowledge and I included the whole DND 5th edition SRD. This is basically the whole rule set, as well as a bunch of examples of how this data should be formatted. I just had this in a TXT file that I uploaded to the GPT. If this video is helping you learn about these new capabilities, consider subscribing to the channel so that you can stay up to date on the latest AI advancements. So I have these two files and let's go ahead and give it a try. Create a stat block for a fire breathing goblin. Nice, so it looks like it's a little bit of a stronger goblin that has fire breath, which is pretty much exactly what I had in mind. Let's go ahead with no further edits. All right, so apparently I'm using Chad GPT too much, reach the limit, but let's try it again now. Here we go, we can see that it is talking to our cloud function now through that create homebrew action that we made. It's going to ask us if we're okay sending some of that data and it's pretty much just that monster stat block in our case, so we're gonna go ahead and allow that. All right, check it out. Our fire breathing goblin stat block is ready on homebrewery.
Let's check out the link. Looks good to me. Look at that. It's perfectly formatted. We can print this out. Let's add an image to it real quick. So I'll go back and create an image for me. I actually tried to do this automatically, but it didn't seem to know the URL of the images that it creates. So I think that's a limitation in the current setup. Sweet. I guess that's a pretty large looking goblin, maybe a fire breathing ogre, but I'll take it. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and use this image. Let's finish it up with a description. After a few final edits, this is our final product, all ready to be used in a game of D&D. If you want to play around with this GPT, I left the link in the description below. Now that you know how to use knowledge and actions in your custom GPT, let's take a closer look as to how we can apply that to create a question answering chatbot for your business. Alternatively, if you want to look at some of the advanced features that push the limits of custom GPTs, check out this video instead. I'll see you there.